Hello, and thank you for joining me for this free training CodeSoft webinar. Now, this webinar is designed to really just help you get up and running with a basic understanding of the software. We'll start with the new label document wizard, and this wizard is going to help you select an internal CodeSoft driver to use, as well as set up the label dimensions. We'll also take a look at adding objects onto the label, such as text fields, barcodes, images, as well as a few shapes, and how to properly align all these objects. To get started, we're first going to launch the new label document wizard. And to do that, you just use the file dropdown and select new. So we'll see the new label document wizard pop up and we have three options in here. We have use current printer, native printer, and Windows printer. Current printer is just the default driver. Native printer is one of the embedded drivers within CodeSoft and Windows printer are all of the printers already showing up in your devices and printers or printers and faxes, depending on the operating system. So any driver already installed before you even install CodeSoft is going to show up under your Windows printers options. You can certainly use those. We do recommend to use the native printers. Um, as I said, they're all embedded in CodeSoft and they're all thermal transfer and direct thermal printers. Uh, you do get more of a WYSIWYG print when you're using these drivers in the software. There are also some added features available in CodeSoft uh, when using the native printers. And we'll touch on those uh, when we get to those sections throughout the, the different webinars that we have. It's very simple to add a native printer. You just click the add printer button here. A little add printer window pops up. And from here, you're just choosing manufacturer, model, and port. It's really that simple. So you'll see a scrolling list of all the different manufacturers. You can expand these, select one of the models. And then on the right-hand side, it's how the printer is connected to the workstation. You're just choosing the port. So there's a scrolling list of all the local ports, COM ports, LPT ports, USB ports. Below that, if you're using a UNC path, you can type that in under the network printers section. Uh, if the printer has an IP address, you can select TCP IP, put in the IP address here. And when you click OK, it will add it to the scrolling window up at the top. And you also have the option to create a new port entirely. Uh, but again, it's just manufacturer model and port. Uh, also, I want to point out that network printers and create new port, these two buttons are going to be grayed out unless you launch the software as administrator. So you just want to be cognizant of that. Once you click OK, it will add that driver to the native printer list. So now that we have a printer selected, we can click Next. And now we are setting up the label template itself. So we have two options in here. We have use custom stock and use predefined stock. If you happen to know the type or name of the stock, you can certainly select predefined stock. Uh, we are going to take a look at custom stock simply so we can see a few of the other windows in this wizard. If you choose the predefined stock, select your type and name, you're essentially exiting out of the wizard. But just to view uh, the next few windows, we're going to choose custom stock. You can type in your own unique type and name. And at the very end of the wizard, you have the option to save it to the predefined stock list. So we're going to click next. We're now inputting the actual label width and height. So if you peel off a label from the roll or from the sheet, these are the dimensions you're inputting here. Uh, you can also add the corner roundness. The higher the number, the more rounded the corner until it's essentially a circular label. And below this, we have the label layout, how many going across and how many going down. If it's a very simple roll of labels, you want to keep this at one by one. And if we click next, now we're inputting the page property. So if you have a sheet with multiple labels on it, you want to uncheck automatic sizing and put in the correct width and height, as well as any applicable margins. Again, however, if you're printing to a roll of labels, we can bypass this by just checking off automatic sizing, as well as printer default. And the last option in here is the media type. If there's a gap between your labels, Generally, it's about an eighth of an inch. You'll select with gap. If there's no gap, select continuous. And if there is a little black mark on the underside of your uh, label template or label roll, you'll choose marked. So we can click next. We have the option for a background image. This can be pretty useful as a watermark. Also, uh, maybe your marketing department has created a, uh, an image of what the label should look like. You can place this on the background of the label template and build on top of it. And if we click next, we just have a very simple summary of everything that we've selected. And again, we have the option to save that stock selection to the predefined list. Clicking finish, we are exiting the wizard. We have selected our driver and we have set up the label template. It's a pretty generic four by six inch label. However, we can now start 
adding objects onto this label. All the objects can be added from the left-hand side of the software at the object toolbar. So we're going to start at this uppercase T for text generation, just kind of work our way down. Now if we click on this uppercase T, we'll see that the, the, uh, the cursor updates. Click on a blank part of the label and we get the new text object wizard. We're going to leave the data source at fixed data for now. It's all constant information. And below that, we can enter in our text that we want to appear on the label. So we'll see that update. And below that, we have a summary of the font style and alignment. And if we click Next, we'll be able to adjust those. So clicking Next, we see a scrolling list of all the different fonts available to us. To the right of that, we have the font size, the font width percent, how wide or narrow that font is, text color, background color, and the style, whether it's bold, italicized, or underlined. Now, word in the fonts, we have two broad subcategories of fonts. We have graphical fonts and print resident fonts. All the graphical fonts are going to be loaded on the PC itself. So it's pulling from the Windows fonts directory. The printer fonts are only going to appear if you're using the internal driver in the software. And they're not loaded on the PC, they're loaded on the printer itself. So at the end of the day, more data is sent to the printer when you're using a graphical font and less data is sent to the printer when you're using a printer resident font. What does that really mean? Uh, if you're doing a 24-7 printing or huge batch jobs, heavily graphically populated labels, things like that, you run the risk of overloading the buffer memory on the printer. So if you start to see things like um, your printer will print label and pause and print label and pause and print label and pause, and you really can't have that, um, if, it, if it should just spit out labels as quickly as possible, we'll start lessening the amount of data that we're sending to the printer. And that's a good reason to start going from graphical fonts to print resident fonts. Now, if we click Next, we can change the alignment, whether it's left, centered, right, or justified. The line spacing percentage, this is based on the font height. Uh, the rotation, we can enable word wrap and fit the frame. Word wrap is if you're typing enough data where it will go outside of the border, it will just automatically jump down to a second line. Fit the frame is a little bit different in that it's going to place anchor points around the text object. You can click and drag those anchor points and um, maximize or minimize the size of that frame. Uh, you want to keep in mind that the font size is going to auto adjust at that point. It's going to try to fill up the entirety of the frame. So if I stretch that to be the full four by six inches of my label, my phrase hello world is going to take up the entirety of the label template. Alternatively, if I type in a short novel, um, it's still going to fit in the label, but it will auto size to be very, very small. And at the very bottom here, we have the XY coordinates. This is going to be based on the anchor point in the top left of the text object. And if we click finish, we have our phrase hello world on the label. Now, we went through quite a few windows to just, uh, to just get these two words on the label. We can actually bypass the wizard. Maybe you have 20 more fields to add. Uh, if you still click the text generation button, hold your shift key, and then click on a blank part of the label, we can just start typing away. Now let's say you have uh, quite a few more text fields to add to the label, but they should be a different size or a different font. If you adjust one of the text objects to either the font or the font size or the style that you'd like, maybe we need to make this a little bit smaller. What we can do is we can right click on the newly formatted text object and select set, uh, set as default. So all the other text fields we'll add will match this uh, font, font size, and font style. Now moving down from text generation, we have barcode generation. So we're going to click on this. We'll see the cursor update again. We'll click on a blank part of the label. And here we have data source again, keeping that at fixed data for now. Below that is the barcode data. This is what's being encoded into the barcode. So now if I scan this, it will result in one through nine. Below that we have a check digit. Check digit is going to take the barcode data, put it through an algorithm and create a last character, a last check digit. So I only have nine characters in here. If I enable the check digit, when we scan this barcode, it would actually result in 10 characters. To the right of that is, is the human readable. Um, we have three options in here, none, default, custom. None is going to remove the human readable. Uh, default is going to be bottom centered and custom is a free flowing text field. Now the symbology section, this is the type of barcode that's being generated. A lot of our end users ask us which type of symbology to use. Each one's a little bit different. A lot, a lot of the times it's based on an in industry standard 
or a requirements document. So we really can't make uh, suggestions regarding that. However, if it's an in-house barcode, the sky's the limit. Uh, each symbology is a little bit different. Uh, some allow for numbers, uh, some allow for numbers and letters, some allow for numbers and letters and special characters. Uh, some absolutely require a check digit. Um, the code 39 that I have selected allows for none or one, but some are uh, relegated to only one check digit. Uh, some allow for none, one or two check digits and uh, all different variations. Now, if you're not meeting the barcode data or the requisite data, you can hover your mouse over the symbology, click on the symbology information button. You'll see a little um, background information in the barcode as well as what can be encoded into that barcode. A uh, pretty good indicator if you're not meeting the requirements uh, is it will gray out the preview. Now, UPCA requires it to be 12 digits, so I add a few more characters in there. It will take 11 characters use the check digit and create the 12th character. So it's allowing us to generate this. If we click next, we can change the rotation. Uh, again, the X, Y coordinates, the bar width dots, essentially the mil spec ratio. And lastly, the bar height. And if we click finish, we're all set and our barcode is on the label. Next object is to add images onto this label. This one's gonna be pretty straightforward. We'll click on that. We'll see the cursor update, click on a blank part of the label. New image wizard pops up. Again, keeping fixed data, I'm sorry, uh, data source at fixed data. And below that, we have a few uh, sample folders and galleries to choose from. Uh, these are all installed with CodeSoft, uh, GHS, hazard and material, uh, safety uh, signal words, things of that nature. So you can choose from a uh, predefined gallery. You also have the option to click the ellipsis button to the right of that. So you can browse out to your own directory with your own images. Once you highlight the directory, all the images in the directory will appear here. You can just highlight the image. And really, if you click Finish, you're all set. You can change some of the image properties by clicking Next. You can change the brightness, contrast, gamma, uh, make it a negative or flip it horizontally or vertically. You can put it through a filter, color palette, and lastly, change the reduction method. Again, clicking Next, we can change the rotation, the stretch mode, whether it's zoomed in or not, and manually put in the X, Y coordinates. But again, uh, if you're not going to be changing any of that, you can just click Finish, and we have our image on the label. A few more shapes to go through. We can add straight lines, squares and rectangles, circles and ellipses, uh, polygons. Each click on a polygon is going to be a different angle. And to close that off, you would double-click that. We can add oblique lines and, lastly, rounded rectangles. Now, each of the objects that I just last added, we can double-click on those increase the uh, the line size or make it more narrow. You can also fill in uh, squares, circles, ellipses, polygons, and round rectangles with a solid color. I'm gonna create a bit of room on this label and then we'll go through the alignment features. I'll just add two more text objects to this so we can better see the alignment. Now that we have three text fields on here, uh, there are two ways to go through alignment within the software. Uh, the first method is if you really want all of the objects placed on the label, uh, maybe you have a database connection or a number of one printed fields, you can create those variables. Uh, we'll go through those in the uh, basic and advanced webinars. You can get them all on the label. Now that they're all on the label, you can go through the alignment. Um, doing it this way, every field that is going to be aligned does need to be highlighted. Uh, you can highlight the top one simply by left clicking on it. You can skip a few objects, hold that shift key, and now two objects are highlighted. You can also hold your left click on the mouse, create a frame, anything encapsulated by the frame when you let go of that left click is going to be highlighted. So now that we have some objects highlighted, we can use the object dropdown, choose alignment, and here we have all of the alignment features. For the most part, they're pretty straightforward, things like left aligning, right aligning, top and bottom alignment. One of the more obscure ones is to use the uh, equalize the horizontal or vertical spacing. That's going to make each space in between the objects equidistant, really cleaning up the label template. Next option for alignment is if you'd like to align as you're designing the label. It will place a grid in the background of the label and all of the objects will snap to that grid using the anchor point. 
Now that grid's not enabled by default, so to enable it, we would use the Tools dropdown, select Configuration, jump over to the Grid tab. As we can see, it's set to None. We can switch it to, let's say, eighth of an inch and choose to display it. Click OK, and we'll see a grid pop up in the background of the label. Now all of these objects will snap to this grid using the anchor point in the top left. And again, uh, this is more for if you would like to align as you're designing the label. If you'd, write, if you'd like your fields to be more free flowing, you can easily disable the grid just by going back to Tools Configuration, choosing the Grid tab, and switching that to None. Now if you click OK, it's going to remove that grid, and the field will be more free flowing. Now that's all the information we're going through in this free webinar for CodeSoft. I hope this helps you get up and running with the software. I hope you all have a good rest of your afternoon.